Welcome to another episode of Airquit Whiskey Studies. And in this video, kind of talk about the mashing process, the two different types of uh, mash tons, as well as the under back and the heat exchanger. But before I get into the mash tons, uh, let's have uh, an overview of the whiskey making process. In making Scotch malt whiskey, barley is first harvested. Then the barley is malted so that the starch is available to be converted into sugar. The malted barley, known as green malt, is then milled in a malt mill to become grist, which typically contains a ratio of 20% husk, that is coarse, 70% grit, which is medium, and 10% flour, which is fine. However, some distilleries prefer 15% husk, 80% grits, and 5% flour. The grist is then converted into a sugary liquid called wort, which can then be fermented into a beer of about 8% alcohol by volume, which is then distilled into a spirit and aged in a cask for at least three years to become whiskey. Now that we've had an overview of the process of making Scotch whiskey, let's take a closer look at the mashing process and the two different types of mash tuns. The process of converting the grist into wort takes place in a vessel known as a mash tun. The mash tun uses heat in the form of hot water to induce natural enzymes, amylase, to break down starch in the grain into fermentable sugars. So as you saw there, that there is this enzyme called amylase, which converts starch into sugar. If you take a salting cracker, for example, and you put it in your mouth and you let it sit there in your mouth, there is amylase in your saliva, and you will notice that the uh, cracker will begin to taste a little bit sweet as that your saliva begins to convert the starch in the cracker into sugar. The sugars and enzymes are then washed from the spent grist using more hot water and filtered out through the sieve-like base of the mash tun to produce a beige-colored sugary liquid called wort. The term mash is believed to be a corruption of the word maceration, referring to the soaking of the ground macerated barley in hot water. Rake and Plow Mash Tuns Traditional open-topped rake and plow cast iron mash tuns resemble a huge pan of porridge being mixed by giant rack and pinion driven rotating rakes. Very few of these Victorian mash tuns are still operational in Scotland. A few include at Brook Lottie Distillery, at Deanston Distillery, at Glendronic Distillery, at Glen Scotia Distillery, Royal Lochnagar, and Springbank Distillery. So as you saw there, the traditional rake and plow sort of uh, works like someone swimming or dog paddling in a swimming pool. You know, the rake and plow goes around in circles, going like this, grabbing and stirring up uh, the mash in the mash tun and you see a lot of water splashing in there. But there is another type of mash tun, which is more commonly used, which is the louder tun. Louder mash tuns. Today, most distilleries now use modern louder tuns. These use technology originally developed for the German brewing industry. And the first louder tun was introduced to Scotland in 1974 at Tomatin Distillery. I've been to 80 distilleries, never been inside of a mash tun. This is the inside of a mash tun. Constructed from stainless steel, louder tuns are insulated circular vessels holding four to 12 tons of grain and 40 to 120,000 liters of hot water. Instead of rotating rakes, louder tuns use blades on rotating arms, which spin around within the vessel fluffing up the bed of grain, allowing the warts to drain. Rather than agitating the entire bed, as in the case with old-fashioned rake and plows, 
which revolve as well as rotate. Louder tons are more economical and produce a clearer wort, particularly if they are what is known as a full louter, which means the blades can be raised and lowered as they rotate. Louder tons with fixed height blades are known as semi-louder mash tons. Louder ton technology may be of German origin, but the biggest maker of louder tons for the Scottish whiskey industry is Briggs of Burton in Burton-on-Trent, England. What is the difference in the whiskey between rake and plow mash tons versus louder mash tons? The type of mash tun and the speed the wort is pumped out will affect the flavor of the finished whiskey. The cloudy wort from a rake and plow mash tun containing husks and flour from the barley will produce a malty, nutty, and spicy spirit. A clear wort from a louder mash tun will produce a spirit with less cereal character. So according to what I have read and found in various sources, there are pros and cons to the two different types of mash tuns. The rake and plow is less efficient. You get less uh, sugar extraction, consequently less wort, consequently less alcohol. So in the longer run, uh, economically, you not get as much bang for your buck out of the barley. However, uh, it is possible to get more of a multi character uh, from uh, the barley if you use the old rake and plow. Now, of course, like everything else, everything is but a small part in the overall profile of your whiskey. However, there are some, are some distilleries, as you saw there, who prefer to use the old rake and plow rather than go over to the modern lantern because they want a little bit more maltiness and a little bit of spice out of their barley. So as you saw there, there are still a handful or so of distilleries in Scotland, like Dinston, uh, who use the old rake and plow. However, most distilleries such as Glenfiddich uh, are using the modern Loutern, semi-Loutern or full Loutern mash tun. So now that I've introduced the different types of mash tuns, we wanna look at the entire mashing process, which includes the three waters, and an underback, which helps prevent blockage at the bottom of the mash tun. The mashing process. As previously mentioned, malted barley that has been turned into grist is added to the mash tun. A first water is added to the mash tun at 62 to 65 degrees Celsius. The mash is stirred constantly, either in a rake and plow or lautern mash tun. The enzyme amylase converts the starch into sugar and the water becomes a sugary liquid known as wort. After about 30 minutes, the wort is drained through the perforated bottom of the mash tun and is collected. Then a second water is added to the mash tun at 70 to 75 degrees Celsius. Again, after about 30 minutes, the wort is drained through the perforated bottom of the mash tun and is collected. Then a third water is added to the mash tun at around 80 degrees Celsius. The sugar content is much lower than the previous steps, so some distilleries do not use this wort for fermentation and instead use it as a first water in the next mashing process. So either the third water or fourth water, also known as sparge, is cooled to 64 degrees Celsius and is used as the first water in the next mashing process. The wort from the first two to three waters drained from the mash are cooled down to 16 to 20 degrees Celsius with a heat exchanger. Then the wort is pumped into the fermentation tank known as the washback, which I will discuss further in another video. The underback. When the wort is drawn off from beneath the floating false bottom of the mash tun too quickly, it causes the false bottom to drop so it ends up sat on actual bottom of the mash tun, sealing the sieve holes and preventing the mash tun from draining. This results in the mash being lost and having to be manually pumped and dug out. In order to prevent such a calamity, what is known as an underback, effectively the top of a U-tube connected to the bottom of the mash tun, allows the operator to see the levels within the mash tun and draw off the surgery wart from the reservoir within the underback rather than the mash tun itself. So which is better, the old rake and plow the traditional mash tun or the Lautern mash tun. Well, there are some whiskey tubers, some traditionalists that are gonna prefer, hey, I want the most flavor out of the barley. So 
So they're going to argue, hey, I want the old rake and plow, which is why they tend to be a fan of, say, spring bake. But uh, let, let's keep this in mind. This is but one trait, one small contribution to the overall profile of a whiskey. And if you're using peated barley, how much of the peat, the smoke, is going to really cover up some of that maltiness or heavy sherry cast. Again, the cast being a more dominant uh, flavor and aroma a contributor and then a little bit of maltiness. But I gotta say, particularly when it came to this Dainston Virgin Oak, I really like the maltiness that shows up on the back end of this whiskey. All right, uh, if you've not yet subscribed, I'm gonna ask you to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified for when I go live or post a new video. And if you wanna watch more of my content, check out these other videos. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.